Well, you guys know Charlie, and um, you know he's been with us before, second time with us. Uh, the na- last two nights have just been remarkable, and uh, just really powerful. And I'm, I'm really thankful, and I'm really thankful when the Lord uh, sends people on assignments, and um, because when He sends them on assignment, there are specific things He wants to do, and specific things that He is doing. And so, we're so thankful for Charlie, and um, it's great to have Nehemiah with us as well. And uh, amen. And uh, so let's just welcome Charlie Shamp. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a big shout this morning. Glory to God. How many have been enjoying this weekend? I'll tell you, last night was awesome. I, I went in the back, but I felt like... The glory was sneaking underneath the, the door because I could hear people just getting wrecked by the presence of the Lord. I'm telling you, it's important um, to have times of refreshing. And I don't believe necessarily that you know we have to just have designated moments where God touches us and then we go throughout our daily life like, can't wait till the next time. You know, but I do believe that there are those set times where we say, God, I, I just, I want to be in your presence. I want to be in your glory, and I want something fresh um, to take place. I'm, I'm ready to go to uh, not just another level. You know, the, have you ever heard that, that saying, another level, another devil? How many have heard that before? They're like, another level, another devil. I'm like, well... How about how about we we go to another dimension, Amen, and uh, go to greater glory, Amen, and um, I believe that's where we're headed. You know, the Bible is full of places where people touched heaven and heaven came down and the heavens were opened, and there was um, an atmosphere and environment of the presence of God. I believe that that isn't by accident. I actually believe that that is cultivated. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world, the presence of God can t- come to you and touch you. Our natural mind would think that God would definitely want to move in big places. You know, we always think if God's going to move in any place, He's probably going to move. Uh, in a large city like Dallas, or he's going to move in a large city um, like Jerusalem, Israel. We always have these these mindsets, but when we look at the Bible, we actually see that where the greatest glory was birthed was in the smallest place in Jerusalem, I mean in, in Bethlehem. And God looks for places that um, may not necessarily look massive to the naked eye, But in the spirit, there is something um, that has been carved out in the the realm of the spirit of God. Uh, First um, chapter of Ephesians in verse 3 says that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. There are rooms in the heavens that are unoccupied, that God wants us as believers to go in. And begin to pioneer. And as I've traveled around the world, I've noticed that there are places where people of of faith began to go after heaven with such tenacity and hunger that it was impossible for God to pass them by. You look at the life of Jacob, where Jacob was um, laid his head on a rock and the angels the ladder was set up and the angels were ascending and descending off of him that was a a desert wilderness place and in fact it was a ziggurat it was a temple people think he just picked a random place to lay his head on a rock and decided that um i'm gonna i'm gonna sleep here but actually what took place was that it was a temple and an altar that was broken down that had been left 
That's why the Bible says that after Jacob came out of that place, he set up the altar and he made a sacrifice to God. There are, there are places strategically in the earth, I believe, that there have been seeds that have been sown for generations, but the altar has been broken down. There have been things that have taken place that have caused that particular structure to go unoccupied, but God looks for another man, another woman. If you're a man, say that's me. If you're a woman, say that's me. I, I don't believe in transgender. I there's only you know they're saying that there's 50 different genders, a hundred different. Ge I said there's only two genders. Man, you're quiet in here. You're supposed to be. It's Oklahoma. You should be agreeing with me right now about that. I'm a little scared. I. I think that Oklahoma in the city of Admore would be the last place that I would find a transgender bathroom in Target. Y'all would fight that tooth and nail, but y'all are being quiet right now. Is that all right to say that? I'm not going to, you know, the police aren't going to come in and arrest me this morning because I said that there's only two genders. I feel like I'm in a safe place in Oklahoma. The ushers are probably packing guns in this place, and it's just the way it is. I was in a church in Tennessee, and, and, and all the ushers were carrying guns. He said, how do you know they were carrying guns? Because they had them on the outside so you could actually see them. I thought, this is an interesting church. I mean, they're catching people, and the gun is like right here. I'm, I don't even know if that's safe, but I felt a little good on the inside. I said, well, you know, hallelujah. So, um, <laughs> oh, I, I'm feeling a little bit of that residue from last night. But there, there are altars that have been torn down, and it would be easy for us to go to a place where it's already been cultivated. But pioneers don't go to places that have been already, already uh, cultivated, and, and, and the land has already been plowed. God sends pioneers to places that ha the ground is difficult, it's tough. But there's a determination in their heart to see something built and planted. I, I, I feel that in general, America has a real apostolic anointing um, and pioneering spirit, you know. And we need to begin to recognize that we're standing in a place where we can cultivate the glory of God, that there's an opportunity that's being given to us that where wherever we are, God can move in a powerful way. And I've traveled to different places around the world, and I've, I've noticed that some of the most, I mean, strange, not even strange, but just places that you wouldn't think God would move, God just explode something in the spirit i mean if you look at the city of redding california where bethel is at you would go why in the world i flew in uh, flew in there from um san francisco i've been a, a couple of times not to the church but the minister in the area and you have to fly on a plot prop plane basically and with like 20 people and i remember the you know the the propellers like <gasps> And you're wondering, you're like, I don't even know if this is very safe to fly in. I mean, the, the airport has got like one, one uh, you know, baggage claim. Play. I mean, it's like the, uh, there's like, a, there's like a, a, a little fence from the airplanes to the people. I mean, there's like, there's like nothing there. And you go, why? Why this place? And it's just because somebody decided that they would set up a, a, a open heaven that they would that they would lay down and say Lord let your glory fall in this place so I'm going to set up an altar I'm going to let it burn and 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 people are going to come and the angels are going to ascend and descend you know God's eyes burn with flames of fire 
And people say, you know, God is an all-consuming fire. That's what the Bible says. But we, we wonder why God's eyes literally burn with fire. But the Bible says that the angels are continuously around his throne. And the angels, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, are ministering spirits. But they are also flames of fire. And so God is continuously beholding the angelic that's around him. And so his eyes are burning with fire because he's beholding the angelic. And because the angelic is beholding God, there is a swirl of the fire of the Lord. And whenever someone begins to behold the face of God, they're changed and transformed in that same image. God wants us to be an altar that's burning continuously. A place where the angels can can be released. I'm going to make a, 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 um, a controversial statement here for some. But everything that comes out of the kingdom has to come out of you. And so because Christ lives in you and he's the door. Everything of the supernatural has to flow out of you. That's why the Bible says, lift up your heads, O you gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, the king of glory can come in. You become the gate for the city in which God can begin to infiltrate the spirit of darkness and release the power of his light and his kingdom. And so if, 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 if everything has to come through you, then that means even the angelic has to flow through you. You become a gateway of blessing. You become a cloud carrier, a glory uh, walker. You become one that is ev everywhere that you go. You're dispensing the spirit of God. And, you know, the Bible says that there's an open heaven that can manifest. And there was the, the shepherds tending to the flock. Sometimes we feel like, we're, we're working and we're doing, and we go, what is the purpose of this? We're just tending to sheep. Look at your neighbor say, bye. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> there you are. I mean, and the shepherd are tending to the sheep. And the Bible says that... The atmosphere opened. And there was a myriad, a company of angels. The word there is a, a, he, a Greek word called strata, which is where we get, our, get the English word for stratosphere. And that means that the entire spiritual realm opened like a vortex was swirling angelic all around. And a cloud enveloped them, hearing angelic worship. In the midst of doing what they were purposed to do, the heavens opened, and there was a sound that came out of heaven that there was a birthing of something new. People look at the glory and they think that it's just a cloud. But when we look in the Old Testament, we realize that the cloud of glory was actually a theophany of Christ. And inside of that cloud, that w when they said we saw the glory... And the children of Israel saw it on the top of the mountain as a fire and a flame, a cloud by day, a fire by night. They, 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 it, they even said that they feared and trembled. Inside of that cloud, see, people get excited when they see the mist or the smoke. That's just the outskirts of the glory. That's just an invitation to a deeper place that God's calling you into him. 
when you get inside of there, you will see the myriad of hosts of angels. And at the center is Christ upon his throne. The power of the Spirit. And the Bible says that we are now seated with him in heavenly places. We have been called as children of God to implement his throne down into the earth. There's, there is a connection between his sons and daughters and the Son of God upon the throne. And Christ incarnated, coming to the earth in that moment was the most triumphant moment in, 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 in history because it was the moment that God would forever clothe himself in human flesh and never separate himself from humanity again. And so there is a connection between humanity and the believer and you and and Christ upon his throne that we have been intertwined in union with him so that we can begin to release the kingdom of God on the earth you are as Paul said a glory carrier Christ in you the hope of glory that generations before us before this time did not understand because it was a mystery a mystery that was unable to be unraveled but has now been revealed to those that are in Christ. And the Bible says that we are given a grace of a supernatural human energy that God so mightily enkindles within us. The Amplified says in Colossians 1.29. The word there is energia. There's a supernatural energy that's living on the inside of you and I. That's why it doesn't matter how I feel when I wake up because the energy of God can suddenly quicken my spirit. The moment that I begin to not walk in the flesh, but I begin to walk in the spirit, when I begin to step out of my natural body and I move into the spirit of God and I begin to move into his body, that life-giving spirit quickens my mortal flesh and I become alive into the things of God that's why it's important as a believer to live in a place of an open heaven you say well brother Charlie I don't feel like I live in an open heaven well just 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 step out of that place and into a different space oh man carve out that realm Take a seat in the spirit and say, I'm not going to be moved by what I see in the natural. I'm going to be moved by the spirit of God. I'm not going to look at the natural. Paul said, do not behold the things which are in the natural, but behold those things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are unseen are eternal. Why? Because the eternal things are what carves out what we see in the natural. If you can see it in the spirit, it will begin to belong to you. And eventually what is seen in the spirit will begin to materialize in the natural. You say, well, that's a new age principle to, to, to you know, to, to, to imagine something and begin to see it manifest. I believe the new age stole that. God gave you an imagination. The devil didn't give you imagination. He tries to infiltrate your imagination. Tries to put thoughts into your head. Because he realizes that out of the imagination, that is the place where things are birthed. And so if he can put you in your imagination that you're being destroyed, that you're going down, that, that your life is ending, that everything that you're doing is not going anywhere, then... He can begin to implant into you seeds of destruction so that they'll be birthed in your life. But if you begin to look into another dimension and you begin to see the good things of God, you begin to recognize that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. And the places are inheritance. It belongs to us. The spirit realm belongs to us. It doesn't belong to the enemy. He's a traitor. He's an, he's an infiltrator. He, he, tries to, he tries to go in and grab things that never even belong to him. That's why the kingdom of God and the children of God are called to take it by force. We're called to take it back. 120 in the upper room, the Bible says that the angels came in. 
You say, how do you know the angels came in? Because there was a burning fire. There was wind. There was something that was ushered in. A new language was given. You can't talk the way you used to talk. And when you start to talk that way, you got to make a decision to change your vocabulary, to change your language, to fit what heaven says. Turn with me to Revel the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation in, 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 in chapter 4. I was ministering in South Africa. I got the opportunity to go to a church. Well, I thought the church was in Durban, South Africa, which was, in, you know, it's a, it's a larger city. I didn't know that this particular church was in the middle of nowhere in, in, in cornfields in a place called Stillfontaine. It was called Spirit Word. And the pastor bought out a old movie theater but like an, like the ones that you drive your car into, do you have any of those like that around here? Mm. We, I try to tell my son about that, but he just looks at me funny like, what do you mean? We've got to go inside the building to watch the movie. I said, no, you know, there's, you should, so they just drive up and watch. And you put that old speaker I'm older than what I look. I'm eternal, actually. I haven't aged a day. <laughs> I'm an ever-living one. <laughs> um, he, he, they, they bought this old movie theater, and they built a church on it. They said nobody will come to it. But uh, the pastor started to pray earnestly that God would visit them. And the power of God started coming in such a dynamic way. He had a dream where he saw um, a pool in his church and he saw an angel come down and stir the waters. And he saw miracles. And the Lord says, if you build it, they'll come. <laughs> Something about movies is so good. Um, so he built an actual pool. He built a pool, and, and it wasn't like, of course they had a baptismal, but they also had this pool of water about that, and they would cause people to walk through the water, and they would see miracles. In fact, they saw so many miracles that they started putting um, the crutches, the wheelchairs, the braces uh, all across the church on the ceiling. At first, they were just burning them, but then they thought, hey, we'll, we'll keep some of these as trophies. So they had like 20,000 crutches, and they built, a, um, they built a cross out of the crutches, and sometimes oil pours out of it. They saw so many cancer, cancer uh, victims healed that they stopped counting, and AIDS victims they would wait until they only had like days to live and they were like dying, stinking with, you know, just death. And they would lay them on mats and they would bring them in the church and the power of God would hit and they would just get instantly healed. And um, I was there ministering and as I was ministering, w we were doing a miracle pool because that's what they call miracle pools. And the water actually started to stir. And they said, well, it's time now. <laughs> that happens to me a lot where I just kind of, I'll just talk until God says, it's time now. That's what Branham used to do. He would just ramble on. I, I heard stories of people that were in Brother Branham's meetings. They would just fall asleep. <laughs> and then he would say, the angel of the Lord's here. And everybody would wake up and be like, oh, God. He's done. Finally. 
Catherine Kuhlman's meetings were like that too. She would just ramble on. She'd talk about mama for four hours. Mama this. <laughs> papa this. Papa that. And then all of a sudden the power of God would break up. Everybody like, okay, it's now it's now it's scared. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the water started stirring and, and the people lined up. We saw four people get out of wheelchairs that, that day. I mean, in the middle of, you know, the middle of the cornfields of South Africa. And the Lord said, it doesn't matter where the location's at. It only matters if my presence is there. Just touch your neighbor and say you're in the right place today. Look at uh, Revelation 4. After these things, I looked and beheld a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice, which I heard, was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. This is uh, the Apostle John after he has been exiled onto the Isle of Patmos. You can't think of a worse place to be than exiled on an island by yourself, left for dead. They tried to boil him in a vat of oil, tried to kill him, but he just danced in the oil, according to um, church historians. They said they can't, couldn't kill the man. They tried to boil him in oil, and he just had a Holy Ghost service. <laughs> he said, I know a lot about oil. We do anointing services all the time. And he just, he said, this, is, this isn't even as hot as some of my services get. I, and just started dancing. They said, we don't know what we're going to do with the man. They said, just throw him on an island. He'll eventually die. You, you, you know, you, you just can't kill certain people. They just keep on living, keep on moving. Doesn't matter what you do to them. You can stab them in the back. You can try to you could try to destroy their their life. You could try to spread ruin. You could do anything you want to them. But I'm telling you, on going. Because it, because when you meet a, a true sent one from God, I know some people got microphones and just went. They just decided that they were anointed, so they just went out and did it. Yeah, usually those people, you never hear their names. But people that are sent by God, you cannot stop them. You can say anything about them. You could write a blog about them. You could take video clips from their meetings that you went to and say that they're full of the devil, but you can't stop them. There's, you know, I feel like I frustrate people all the time. You know, people write blogs about me, and they, they'll, they'll have little video clips about me. And I just, I, I don't, I just laugh. I have people that will break down my sermons and how, you know, un unbiblical they are, and I just laugh about it. You got to laugh at the devil sometimes. You want to frustrate the devil more than anything? Just laugh underneath an open heaven. I mean, at least they're talking about you. If the devil didn't care, he wouldn't even mention your name. If he didn't think you were a threat, he wouldn't even waste his time. He wouldn't demonically inspire anybody to speak about you because there would just be no reason to try to stop you. They would just, you know, just go on, move on. You know, some of the blogs, I, I, you know, some of the websites that you, they'll, they'll say things about you, I, I, I go, man, there, there's another badge. There's a, that's a good one. I, that's, a, that's a good, uh, you know, heresy hunting website. All my favorite preachers are on that one. And there I am right there. Yes. I have made it now. Yes, there's Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn. There, uh, there they all are. There's Brother Hagen right there. Oh, they put my name right under Brother Hagen's. Hallelujah, I'm so glad. He 
here's, here's the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos, the very last of the, of the apostles of the Lamb. And he's there on the island by himself. He could have just said, you know what, forget this. I'm just going to lay down and die. Ever felt like that before? Where do you like, oh, God, I just can't go on anymore. There's something about the superhuman energy of God. There's, there is different types of power in God. One of them is dunamis. We know that one. But energia is that super energy that just keeps energizing you when you're running out. It's like the Energizer Bunny. You seen? You remember that the Energizer Bunny? Is that still around, or is that I'm getting? I, I'm getting old. I'm not, I'm like, I barely made it into the millennials, like right at the edge. So I'm just so happy. <laughs> People say, are you a millennial? Yes. I'm just barely made it. But the Energizer, I mean, the Energizer Bunny just keeps going, 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 going. And when you feel like you're running out, it's just whew, superhuman energy just comes upon you. It can even rejuvenate your physical body. To the point where your, 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 your wrinkles can vanish. God will re-energize your body to the point to where he'll take you back 20 years ago. Yeah, he will. He'll do it. You know. You got a little fluffy over the years. 20 years ago, you were in, it's, suddenly you can come into the glory and you can just... Some of that fluff will just be cut off. The wrinkles will leave. You know, you had, you had seven kids and pulled out all your hair, and now you're bald. The power of God can rejuvenate all your hair. Somebody just got happy. They said, bless God, I knew I was in the right place. I, trying to go for those hair extensions and brother Charlie's talking about the glory and just rejuvenation yes I will take some of that oil <laughs> the Bible says that Moses' eyes didn't even grow dim because he was in the glory the Bible says that Sarah was able to bear children people think that Sarah was like decrepit You know, she's like shaking. She's not in her 90s now. And you're like, oh, my goodness, this is a miracle. But if, 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 if that was true, then the pharaoh of Egypt, the king of Egypt, would not have wanted to take that woman as his wife. I mean, why would he choose that when he could, you know, he could have the... Any pick of the of the land that he wanted, he went to Abraham and said, uh, "Abram, uh, that lady that's with you, who's that?" He lied. Well, no liar. He said, "That's my that's my sister." He said, "Man, I think she's pretty hot." Can I? If she was the de- either Pharaoh was blind or something happened. To Sarah's body. What happened was that they came underneath an open heaven. They had a visitation. The Bible says that they were in their tent and the glory of God came. God the 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 Lord came with two men in white linen out of the cloud of witnesses. And they walked in there and they said, Abraham, look up, you're gonna see all these stars. You see that? That's your descendants, and your wife is gonna bear a child. And she started laughing. She didn't believe it. But right as she started laughing, her whole body started rejuvenating. People ask me, they say, why the laughter? Why the joy? They get upset more than anything about the joy for some reason. I'm like, yeah, depression is the thing of the Spirit, right? No, the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is joy. In fact, the Bible says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I ask people, I say, do you love the Lord? And and are you happy? Yes. (laughs) I'm very happy. Are you filled with joy? Yes. (laughs) 
I can't really tell. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Brother Charlie. You know, religion will do that to you. And just, just face, just blank face. How you doing, sister? I'm very good. <laughs> do you need prayer for anything? Yes. What do you need prayer for? I believe the Lord will show you that. <laughs> Religion will stifle the life of God. But when we get into the life of God and we get into the spirit of God, we get in that Zoe life is the is the Greek word. It's the life of God. It's not a life that man can give you or possessions that you have can give you. It's a life that only God can give you. When you get into that kind of life, it doesn't matter if they throw you on an island where you have no fellowship and you have no one to talk to except for the Lord. And, it, you know, some of our talks with the Lord can be complaining. Man, Charlie, you're, you're doing good on Sunday morning. Uh, you can be complaining, and, and that's not prayer. Even talking to God doesn't make you spiritual. Prayer doesn't make you spiritual. Only obedience and listening to what God says will make you spiritual. Because when you hear from God and you know it's God and you step out on the things that God has spoken to you, you cannot fail. Even when others say that it, there's no way that that's from God. Many times people want to be led by, the, by prophets when God has called us to be led by his word. And the mo some of the most... Uh, Intense situations that I had to make in my life in ministry along with my wife Bryn were, were not necessarily directional by the prophetic, but were the still small voice in God which God spoke into my inner, inner man that said this is the way that you're supposed to walk. When you're a mature son, you can hear the smallest whisper of the Spirit, and it'll energize you to go forward in the things of God. When you have a vision from Him, it may not necessarily have to be shouted by 15 different prophetic voices and, 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 and have all these things lined up before it ever happens. In fact, most of the time, it's never lined up. You just see it in your spirit, and you just walk forward step by step, and suddenly you look back 10 years from where you were at and say, how did, how did that happen? It was simply through obedience. And in the midst of all that, we can get into a place where, where the enemy will try to lock us in. But when you live underneath an open, open heaven, it's impossible, hallelujah, to be locked anywhere. And so the apostle John is on an island that he's literally locked into, and, the, and no, there's nowhere for him to go. And the Bible says, after, he, after I, I looked and beheld a door, Standing open in the heaven. This word uh, looked is a word called edu, which is not just a natural. It's a, it's a word that can be translated in the English language as knowledge, but it's supernatural knowledge. This isn't something that you get from learning and writing in books or reading in books. This is a supernatural knowledge that comes from the Spirit of God. Often we're looking for visions and experiences to lead us. Sometimes Edu knowledge comes to us, and it, it's in our spirit, and it'll come as a still small voice, but yet we see the vision and we behold it, not with our spiritual eyes, but it's so real. Are you following me this morning? That, 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 that you see it, although you don't see it. is a door standing wide open and the first voice which I heard you know God's when he comes and speaks to you he does his voice doesn't change the same when you recognize God's voice it's the same
you got to differentiate your spirit from your mind because the enemy wants to attack our mind. The voice, the contrary voice will come to your mind, not into your spirit. Your spirit, you'll feel that. Ooh. And the Bible says that they'll behold a door. This word door is an entrance or a passage. But it also means an opportunity. God will give us an opportunity in the midst of the hardest moment when we're looking for a door out. God will offer us a door in. When we're looking for a way out, God will say, here's a door an opportunity, and it's into something. Oh. And you'll hear the voice of God like a trumpet. It'll come like a sound, a vibration, a frequency. It'll come like that worship that the, that the, um, the shepherds heard. The stratosphere will open, and, it, and it'll be a resounding sound, a tone. A, 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 a vibration that will begin to pull you like a like a magnet into the realm of the spirit. The amazing thing about the cloud of God's glory and the theophany of God is that the throne of the Lord is movable. It's mobile. And so when we begin to behold him and we begin to set our eyes on him, the Apostle John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. How did he get into the spirit? He began to seek God, not out of a place of fear or timidity or a place uh, where he felt like there was nothing left, but out of a place of, well, God, here I am in the midst of this island, yet I'm not bound by this place. You can open up the heavens and you can pour out something and the glory of God can begin to be expressed and I can begin to behold visions of God and I can, I, I can, even, I can even see what's about to come in the future past the place of where I am living today even after I've gone into heaven and I've, I'm seated with you. I can behold things that have yet to transpire in the earth out of this place of uh, of confinement God you can give me the greatest vision that I've ever had in my life and it will affect not only my generation but generations that come after me you have to begin to live for legacy and recognize that your life what you've planted what you've done what God has called you to is not just for that moment and then not just to to, to, to to see fruit in that time but God is talking about generations after you Abraham was walking in the desert. He never saw the promised land, but he knew that God had promised him a promised son that would literally generations after he was gone would bless many. You have to begin to look at your life generationally that the things that you're doing right now are going to affect generations ahead. If God called you to add more, you got to begin to recognize that God isn't just talking about 2019, but he's talking about 2030, 2040. We have Brother Charlie, what if Jesus comes back? Well, then he comes back. But what are you doing right now to affect the future? And what doors are you stepping through? through in the spirit and carving out for your family and your and your children's children that are going to come behind you because there needs to be a legacy that's left of godliness that will begin to affect generations because there's something about your DNA in your bloodline that can that when you begin to seek God there are things that are being birthed out of you that will bless your children's children. And see, when you're standing in the midst of the hardest trial and you're saying, God, I feel like giving up. I feel like quitting. I feel like throwing in the towel and saying it's all over. That's the moment that you got to rise up and you got to begin to say, no, I'm not going to stop. 
I'm going to keep coming. You know, I, I this may offend you a little bit, maybe not. I, I like fighting. I don't know. There's a fight. There's like a. I like. I like boxing. I like. I just. You know. My daughter's eight years old. She she's in jujitsu, which you probably might not know jujitsu is. It's a lot of chokes and breaking of arms. She's eight years old and takes on all the boys. They're scared of her. I'm like, good job, honey. Keep going. She'll choke a little boy out and be like, oh, oh, oh. I was like, good job. Yeah, that's great. But there's a, there was a fight um, years ago. It's a very famous fight with George Foreman and Muhammad Ali. It was done in Zaire, now uh, the nation of Zimbabwe. Um, and this fight was, uh, a f- uh, a, a, you know, they said George Foreman was going to win because he's like two, two times as big as Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali was, was, a, was a, you know, um, smaller for heavyweight. But there was, you know, he, the thing that made Muhammad Ali so awesome was his mobility on his feet. He was very light on his feet, although he was a, a, was a heavyweight. And they said, well, George Foreman is going to crush Muhammad Ali, you know, because of his strength, his brute, his force. And uh, they got in, they were fighting, and he was taking, Muhammad Ali was taking so much punishment. And he was blocking, 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 you know, and just weaving. And George just pounding on him, pounding on him, pounding on him, and losing every single round. People were like, you know, Muhammad Ali's washed up, he's finished. And what they didn't know is now called the rope-a-dope. How many ever heard of the rope-a-dope before? That, what was happening was Muhammad Ali was allowing George Foreman to wear him out because he was covering and none of the, none of the shots were really making it through. And so it was a, they call it the rope-a-dope because he was literally just blocking shots and George was just spending all of his strength and all of his might to try to, to, try to put out Ali. And, and, and in the final, one of the final rounds, he whispers over at George and he says, Is that all you got, George? Is that all you got? That's what you got to do to the devil. See, he's thinking that he's beating on you, and you say, is that all you got? And see, that's when, that's when Ali broke free, and now, the, uh, now Foreman had no more strength, and he ended up knocking him out and becoming the world heavyweight champion again. Listen to me. You got to, in the midst of that fight, just bob and weave, baby, just bob and weave. When those attacks are coming, just bob and weave. And then when the enemy thinks that he's got you up against the rope, you just lean over and say, is that all you got? Because you don't know who you're messing with. Because I'm not looking for a way out. I'm looking for a way in. And these opportunities are being handed to us right now. There's opportunities that God is giving to us right now to enter into a deeper place with Him, to carve things out in the Spirit. They'll cost you. The Spirit, the the things of the Spirit will cost you. You know, when I first started, I thought everybody would be happy about signs and wonders. I learned very quickly that people are not happy about signs and wonders. I thought, wow, this is great. Angel feathers are falling to my meetings. Gold dust is coming. Oil's coming out of people's hands. This is going to be awesome. Gems are falling from the heavens. I mean, it's like, this is great. No. People weren't happy. Some people were mad. Some people were happy. But you have to make a decision to say, God, when you open up a door, 
an opportunity to enter into another spiritual dimension of your glory, I'm not going to back up and say, no, Lord. No, I'm going to walk through that open door, and I'm going to begin to carve out that space. Not everybody is going to understand it. Some things you can't put on social media. Don't cast your pearls before swine, but just recognize that God is into the into the business of blessing you, and when God gives you something and he gives it to you to he's calling you to steward that very thing and you can't just say you know what God I don't want this because it causes too much controversy let me tell you something if you're going to be a part of a supernatural move of the Holy Ghost you are always going to be talked about you can't you can't get around it you can't get away from it you might as well just accept it that there are some people that are not going to like you but they can never trap you never stop you never put you you into a place where they think that they can control you. No, because God has given to you a way to go into his presence, into his power, into his glory, and in that place where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty, and we behold in a mirror the glory of the Lord and are changed from glory unto glory. God is continuously changing us. If you think that you've made it already, friend, you need the fire of God. You need the presence of the Lord. You need the glory of God to come on you and change you into that same image. You need to look back into the eyes of God again and let the fire of the Lord consume you uh, and, and begin to burn on that altar afresh and let the fire of the Lord touch you in such a way that you're transformed in everything that has been attached to you, all the enemy's attacks, all the things that have caused your mind to put in, be in doubt and unbelief, let them burn off of you when we get into the presence of God and we get ourselves on the altar of heaven and we allow the heavens to be open over our life the fire of God will burn out everything and the energy the energy of God will begin to burn bright in us to where we say you know what I can keep going I can keep moving Lift up your hands this afternoon. God's calling us up. He wants to show us things which are going to take place. You got a destiny. You got a purpose in God. God's calling you to carve something out that hasn't been carved before. There's an artistic expression in the spirit of God that God that the Lord is calling you to create only you can carve it out or paint this picture on the canvas what is it what is it that God wants to put on the put on the earth through your life that people can look at and say they took the opportunity they stepped into the spirit they pulled something out of that place out of the spirit they pulled something and they changed their community they changed their 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 state they changed the city they changed the nation they pulled something they they affected some someone's life they transformed a community they they took a hold of the uh, 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 of the opportunity that was put in their hand if you think that somehow you got here by your own your own wittiness or how great you are friend you are you are wrong God 
put you, planted you, secured you in a place. And that's why you go, God, I wish I could just escape, but I can't get out of here. It's because your roots are so far down deep that there's no way that you can be uprooted or upplanted. God did something to you on purpose. He put you in the thing. He called you, and you, you answered that call. Now there's no escape. Jacob thought that he was wrestling with the angel and he thought that he was going to win. It was actually a setup. He was wrestling. In the midst of that wrestling, his life was marked. Bible says that his hip was his hip was touched and he walked every moment after that with a limp. There are there are times where the presence of God will come in such a unique way that the encounter will mark you forever and when you want to give up, you want to stop. You go God will remind you of where you came from, that walk that you've been on, that journey that you've been traveling, that that limp that you've got now, you can't get rid of. When you have an encounter with God, you, it's no way you can't get rid of it. It, it, it. When you God gives you a vision, He gives you a dream. It's something that you can't just put in a book and uh, in, in in a pad of paper or or, or uh, write it up on a a, a computer and a word document and seal it away. No, it's something that's in your spirit that literally comes and and and, and speaks to you. You can't get away from it, the vision of God. Glory. Whew. Fire of God in this place this, this morning. You're here the, by the divine design of the Lord. The Lord brought you here. Some of you, this is the place where you're, you're, you've planted yourself in this church. You've become a part of this ministry. The, the enemy would love nothing else but to rip you, pull you out. But the Spirit of God is blowing afresh. And, and the roots are going to go down deep. The, 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 the fight is for a purpose. It's for your children's children. It's for the city. It's for, uh, it's for a move of God in this land, in this, in this place where God has put you. The enemy would love nothing else for you just to say, you know what, I can't do it anymore. I can't go any harder. I can't. No, the supernatural strength of God is being released this morning into your spirit, and you are going to to be energized to continue to go and burn for the Spirit of God, to burn even brighter for, for the kingdom of the Lord. Oh, thank you, God. Let the power of the Holy Ghost just move in this place. Let your glory just saturate us through this open door. I'm telling you, standing open in the realm of the Spirit is an, is an opportunity, and God is calling us to step forward into that place. Now there's some that are here this morning and you've actually, you've been away from the Lord and you're not serving Him the way that you should serve Him. You've, you've just been away from Him. You've been teetering back and forth, one foot in the world, one foot uh, in church, but it's just, a, it's been a game for you. Friend, it's time to step through that door. Can't play games with God. 
God's serious about your call. He's serious about your life. He's serious about your destiny. He's put everything in. He cashed all the chips in. He gave his son for you. He said, I believe in them. I believe. I believe in them. I believe in them. He's given every. And then now it's time to step forward and say, God, I'm going to step through that door of salvation. I'm going to shut it behind me. I'm never going back. I feel like there's some that are here this morning and you've just been going through the motions. Just, you know, you go to church once in a while. You just kind of say, well, you know, if I if I go, I go. If I don't, I don't. And so, so there may be someone that's here this morning that you've never given your life to the Lord, truly de dedicated your life to Jesus, put your heart on the altar and made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life and said, Lord, I want the fire of God to burn on my heart continuously I want my altar of my heart to be on fire if that's you I want to pray for you this morning there's several things I want to pray but if you're away from the Lord and you want me to pray for you I just want you to lift up your hand right now wherever you're at if that's you you're saying I want you to pray for me I've been away from God I'm not on fire for him I'm a, I'm not burning the way that I should burn for him I want I want I want you to pray for me maybe you backslid and you're away from God and you don't know him this morning I want to pray for you if that's you you lifted up your hand I want you to come to the front right now I want to pray for you. Don't care what people think about you. Just say, God, I'm coming this morning. I'm coming back to you. I'm going to burn for you everywhere that I go. I'm going to begin to serve you in a greater way. I'm not going to be afraid anymore. I'm not, I'm not going to be intimidated anymore. No, I'm going to burn on fire for you, Lord. I'm going to rededicate my life today. I'm going to give my heart to you, Jesus. And, and after this day, I'm never looking back. I'm closing the door to my past and I'm moving into my future I want to see what you have for me God I've seen it before but I walked away now I'm coming today and I'm saying Lord I am going to enter into the glory I'm going to go for you all the way I'm going to burn for you I'm going to say Lord here am I use me I'm going to answer the call of God on my life I, 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 I want to be used by you so many times we are running from God and God God's trying to bless us and he's trying to get a hold of us and and he's trying to he's trying to change us and we're saying God I could do it on my own friend you can't do it on your own only God only God can transform a man's life telling you there's people that are underneath the sound of my voice you're going to be some of the greatest witnesses in the city you're going to be some of the greatest carriers of the presence of God God's going to light you on the fire to the point where you can't keep your mouth closed about it that's you this morning I just want you to come right now some of these young people are going to set their schools on fire the greatest places that God can begin to move is in our schools pour out his spirit I'm telling you the Welsh revival was started by a, by a 12 year old or 14 year old girl it wasn't even Evan Roberts that was 27 years old. It was a young girl that, st that stood up and began to, began to cry out to God. And her tears washed over the entire nation of Wales. Turned into an outpouring. One girl, the power of God broke out. There's a divine opportunity, I believe. I've been feeling it all, all weekend and we've been 
pressing into the presence of God. That there's something special that is coming in this place. There's something special about this place, uh, about Global Harvest. That the that it's not by accident. Church called Global Harvest. Yeah, it's there. There is a harvest that God wants to bring in. There's a realm of the Spirit that's being carved out right now. I'm telling you, you're pressing in. You're moving into new dimensions. It may feel it may feel like there's so much pressure but I'm telling you out of the place of pressure God begins to produce diamonds he begins to produce the most powerful people on the planet when we get into an atmosphere where the glory of God is pressurized out of that place of the pressure God can release the power Shut your hands towards them this morning. You're standing in the front. I'm gonna, I'm, I want you to pray a prayer with me. The Bible says if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, we'll be saved. Many of you in the past have given your life to the Lord, but this morning you're going to rededicate your life. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to touch you in a fresh way. I'm going to ask God to release such a fire in your spirit, man, that you will, you will be awakened in the middle of the night to pray. You will be a, you will have to witness. You'll be in them. You will be in Walmart. You'll be on the street. You'll be on the phone with your friend, and you'll tell them about Jesus. It'll just start to bubble right out of you. Just say, just say, Lord Jesus. Just shout, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart right now. Forgive me of my sins. Wash and cleanse me and set me free. Say, Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died for me, and I make you the Lord of my life. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, invade my space. Invade my life. Fill me afresh with your presence come on say lord say holy spirit invade my space oh invade my space fill me fresh with the presence of god let me never be the same let me never be the same Lift up your hands right now. Father, in Jesus' name, all the way up. Holy Ghost. Lord, let your presence just move. Such a fresh way, God, this morning.
The other thing I felt very prompted to do this morning is I feel that there are several people that are here that you have been contemplating, you've been thinking about going to the supernatural school of ministry. You've been thinking about this, and really you've kind of just said, well, there's just no way I can do it. There's just no way that I can I can do it. I, you know, I'm telling you, God wants you in that school. And we say, well, I'm not called into full-time ministry, so what supernatural school is going to do much for me? I believe that every believer that is a true believer of the Lord needs to be trained, needs to be equipped, needs to have their foot in, both feet in a local church, and the schools of the supernatural are designed for those that be, that are want to become mature in the things of God, to move into greater, to greater calling, whether you're called to be a businessman, uh, you know, a faithful wife I mean uh, uh, supernatural ministry schools aren't just for being behind pulpits they're for a training and equipping and there are intensified times that you can come together and learn of the things of the spirit things that you'll learn in the school are not going to be things that Pastor Andy can teach on a, on a Wednesday or a Sunday these are things that begin to it, it bring you into intensified uh a discipleship and 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 there's that place of the of the uh, cultivation I mean there's really three dimensions to the Word of God there's the milk there's the meat and there's the mystery the milk is for babies but the mystery is for those that are mature and see what will happen is when you come into a, a school setting like that you'll be in a, a place where believers are in like mind with you and see what would have taken 10 years can take place in a semester you can learn by the Spirit of God more than you could learn just by being you know going on a Sunday morning that's why Paul the Apostle when you look at the book of Acts in chapter 19 he was training daily in the school of Tyrannius why was he there because he was training a for the supernatural school he was training disciples so that they could be in, in turn change the city you want to change your culture you got to get equipped you say, well, Brother Charlie, I'll just, you know, watch a bunch of YouTube videos. No, it's not the same as coming into an intensified time. And I love it. It's not like you got to come every single day. It's a Monday night. You can just say, God, I'm going to commit to be there on Monday night. I'm going to commit to be in the school. And I'm going to commit a semester. And I'm going to carve out some space, Lord, so that I can grow. And I can become a, a citizen of heaven and be one that can be used in the things of God. I think one of the greatest disadvantages that we do to ourselves, especially people that are called into ministry, is that we feel the, the call of God. We have an encounter with the Lord, and we get a gift on our life, but it hasn't been fully cultivated. And we wonder why, you know, things happen with people. It, it's be, it, it, primarily it's because they were never trained properly in the supernatural and, and, and when, you, when you look at the background most of the time they had no connection into the local church their ministry just started out of nowhere like a flash in the pan you don't want to be that you don't, you don't, you don't want to just be a shooting star you want to be like the North Star you want to have a legacy this is what I felt this morning. Is, is there those applications? Do we have ones actually printed? Uh, what, I feel like there's several people who say, well, Brother Charlie, I don't know if I have the finances. I'm telling you, God will give you the finances. He will, and they've already waived the $25 application fee. I feel like there's several people that are here this morning, and you need to step into this school. If that's you, I want you to come to the front right now because I want to pray for you. I believe that God will bring the finances for you. He will give the money for you to go to the school to get trained and equipped. If that's you, I want you to come up right now.
I feel like it's several people that are here and you've, you're like, well, I don't know, uh, maybe I'll go. No, today is the day and there's a cl clarion call to step in. And I want to put that application in your hand and I want to pray for all the finances to come in for you to do it. Now, if that's you, I want you to come right now. Come and stand right in front of me. Listen, I've been to two Bible colleges. I, I, the, I, I went to one Bible school and I started to launch my ministry and the, and the Lord told me, he said, son, you have a supernatural gift on your life, but you need to learn the word better. Go back to school. So me and my wife went back to school and we got trained and equipped. And I, I mean, I worked a night job, midnights, midnights, late night from, I worked the job that I had to work to go to Bible school. I had to be there at like 8.30 at night and I worked until seven in the morning. I was on that night, late, late third shift. I said, Lord Jesus, help me. So I could go to school. Sometimes you gotta sacrifice. For your call, there has to be sacrifice. I'm telling you, just sir, just come right over here. Step right over here. Where are those applications? If you're coming, come right now. You see these. Take one of these. Take one of these. Come on up. If you've already turned your application in, just come on up as well. You turned it in already, but you're coming. Yeah. Some people can't get you. We go, well, you know, if I'm called, uh, yeah, I'm going to go over here to this school over here. It's in, you know, I got to get on an airplane, fly over there. Why not, why not start here? People say, well, I'm going to go to, to this supernatural school of ministry over here and I'm going to get finances. What if they don't even accept you? At least Pastor Andy loves you. He's going to accept you. You guys, come, come, come over here. Did you get one of these? Have you filled it out? You're gonna, you're gonna go. You're gonna, you're gonna try. Okay. All right. Did you guys get one of these? You filled it out. You already turned it in. Okay. Good. Did you get one yet? You haven't filled it out. You got your first day, and you're gonna come. I'm telling you, God's gonna do something in your life. You just gotta carve out the space, and you gotta say. And and I'll tell you what will happen. In the middle of it, you'll wanna stop. But remember this moment that I'm talking to you right now. It always happens. You know, the fires and the zeal, the just, I'm going to do it. And then, you know, you get like six weeks in, you're like, oh, Jesus. Be a fence, Lord. Take this. So I'm going to pray for you. And I, I'm going to, I'm going to, are you coming too? Are you coming? Come over here. application is like a door. I want you to see it as an opportunity. Not as, you know, well, I'll, I might walk through this. No, did you fill this out? You're in the middle of filling it out to take this one anyways. This one's more anointed. Thank you, Jesus. You'll want to, you'll want to, you'll say, ah, just, every Monday, something will try to come up, I promise. It'll say, well, you know, I'll try to make it next week. No, you got to plow through, and that's what I'm going to pray for you today, that, that there would be a tenacity. You know, you got to guard your anointing. I look, I, I often look at it, uh, I use the analogy of a bulldog. You got to have bulldog tenacity to guard your anointing and say no push out all the other things Think people will be calling you on the phone trying to get you distracted you just got to shut off shut that all out shut that off 
and go into the things of the Spirit. Lift up your hands. I'm going to pray for you this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these, these students of the Supernatural School of Ministry. Lord, I know this is fertile ground. This is a good place. I, Lord, I, I thank you for this school. The, 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 the doctrine is sound. The, the, the ministry is a good ministry. Lord, these, the, these, these that are standing here are going to grow. And I pray for acceleration. Lord, I pray for acceleration. I pray for protection. Lord, I pray for your presence to be uh, around them, Lord, that they, they would not let anything steal the seed of God uh, that you have, you have planted in them, God, that this will be a season, a time, a year where they can grow in the things of the Spirit like never before. Lord, let the power of the Holy Ghost break out on them, God. Father, I thank you that they would just be students, but Lord, that they would enter into a time of experience acceleration in their calling and their purpose in life. Lord, whatever they're called to do, whether they're called to be five-fold ministry gifts or they're called to be businessmen and women or they're just called to be good citizens. Lord, I pray that this school would set them on fire. Lord, I thank you for the call of God upon their life. I thank you that you placed them and planted them in this city, in this in this in this town for a purpose, God. You put them in this church. God, you put placed them in this region so that they could be used by the Spirit of God. Lord, I thank you that this is a launching pad. You showed me it was a launching pad, even into the nations. Lord, I thank you that standing before me, there's missionaries and those that will go into the nations and see supernatural miracles and signs and wonders. Lord, use their hands, equip them in their spirit man to do mighty things for your kingdom. Lord, I just bless them right now. Lord, I thank you for all the finances that they need. Every dollar, God, every dollar, let it, let it come in supernaturally for them. Lord, let, let provision whoa, come out of the heavens. Fill up their, their barns, their storehouses. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let that, let that fire flow over them light the fire let it continuously burn on the altar lord let it let let it flow 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 thank you lord let it flow all the finances provision Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Distraction broken. Lord, I thank you. Dividing asunder the soul and the spirit. Let that flow right now. Holy Ghost, thank you. Thank you. Every every in Jesus' name. All the finances are open. Lord, nothing, let nothing distract.
or anything. I'm praying for you too. Could you just stay right there? I'll pray for you right there. Father, I just see the fire of God. I mean, you're going to be a man literally possessed by the presence of the Lord. This is going to be one of the most powerful years. I see it for the school. One of the most powerful years. One of the most transformative years uh, of the school. And I see that the Lord is going to give even fresh revelation. I, I see a scribe angel literally as you're ministering writing things in your notes that you didn't see that were there before and things are going to begin to come out by the spirit of God and I, I see such a fire uh, and a tenacity and a, and a burning in your eyes I see the eye of the Lord literally the this, this seven eyes of the Lamb and the seven dimensions of the Holy Spirit beginning to move around you the wisdom of God and the miracle power of the Lord I, I, I see that this year is going to be a year that people will be so transformed and, and changed that you won't even recognize those people. You'll say, wow, God, thank you. I see, I see the gift of God increasing in your life, Pastor, and the, and the avenue of teaching. But it will be teaching in the supernatural. It will be a supernatural utterance upon the teaching, revelatory information will come forth during the sessions and you'll say I didn't even know that that was there I didn't even study that before but I see this angel literally writing 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 I see like this I see like a wing of the angel and he's using it it's like the feather the feather out of the wing of the angel to write the transcripts to write the curriculum you need to record I don't know if you record the sessions like from years past but this year you need to make priority to record because there's going to be things that are going to come out revelatory that are going to be amazing so Father, I just thank you for the, I thank you for the fire. I thank you for the that teaching gift that just supernaturally being being released uh, uh, upon Pastor Andy in the name of Jesus. We thank you for angelic assistance. The, the Lord, you said you sent your angels as ministers, like fire and wind. There is going to be a real move of the Spirit on Monday nights. It's going to be the fire and wind of God going to be blowing through. In the midst of teaching, the wind of God is going to begin to blow. I, I see people just, while they're, while they're studying and they're, and they're taking notes, they're going to fall out in the presence of God. They're going to be laid out in this place. I see visitations from God coming on these Monday nights. These are going to be, uh, the, the Lord says it's going to be an outlet for you, like an an outlet, an outlet, an outlet. The Lord says get ready because the energy, an, a supernatural energy, vitality, uh, uh, the, literally God is going to plug you into the, into the socket of heaven. And I see you vibrating. I see you shaking. I see you like a like a lightning rod attracting the lightnings of God. And I, and I need to say this too. I, I I see. I asked you last night. I said, has there been a lot of rain in the area? I'm telling you right now, there is going to be some really interesting uh, 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 storms that are going to come through the area. I see an abundance of rain falling as a sign a sign of the latter rain. And I. See See even lightning strikes that are going to going to shake the ground in the city. There, there, there's unusual things that are going to be taking place, and the Lord is going to make you and make this place a lightning rod for blessing, a lightning rod for the supernatural. And I see that people that are attracted to this place, they're going to be attracted to this house. They're going to come in, or they're going to be refreshed, energized, and transformed by the power.
power of the Spirit. And I see electricity just flowing through this body. I see the lights. Some people that have their lights have gone out. They're 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 this like nobody's home. I see their light, and you say, God, I've been believing for them for 10 years. The lights are gonna come on. They're gonna they're gonna start to beam with the presence of God. The glory is gonna be gonna gonna come, and you're gonna say, My God, I didn't even think that they were alive. I didn't even think the lights were on in that in that house. And the Lord says, I'm gonna begin to bring such electric power into this place. I'm gonna plug this house into the into the very source of heaven, the very light socket of heaven, and the energy of God is gonna begin to be released. And I see this house as a light source for this entire city in this region. There's a there, there where ships, other ministries are gonna come in and just get refreshed. They're gonna come in. It's like a, a literally like a like a light source uh, 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 that's calling out. And I see the light of heaven being released, a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. You've been hidden for a long time, but the Lord says that you're coming out of hiding. You're coming out of the out of the wilderness with the burning fire and passion like John the Baptist. And I see in this place that there's going to be many that are going to be baptized, even water baptized, water baptized, even demonic powers are going to be broken. I see, I see those that are addicted to drugs, they're going to be baptized and the power of God's going to touch them. They'll be set free. They'll even be students in the school. I see supernatural energy in times where you, you, you won't even, you won't even be able to stop preaching because the power of God will be so strong. I see energy literally being released out of your hands and the spirit of God coming upon you, the spirit of might to outrun the chariots. I, I'm telling you, there is an acceleration in this place. You're about to run. You're about to run. You're about to run. You're about to run and outrun. Outrun the chariots. Outrun the chariots. Outrun the chariots. Lord, I bless this place. This house is a lighthouse. And it's a beacon of hope. Literally around the area. It's gonna just there's gonna be people that are gonna be attracted to this place. I see in the realm of the spirit up to 50 mile radius around this church. God is expanding the territory of this ministry, the influence of this place. It's going to be like a lighthouse. The light, I see the light going out 50 miles all around. People are, are going to be attracted to this house. They'll see the light. They'll come. They'll see, they'll see the light in the midst of darkness, and they'll come. They'll come into the house. They'll come. I see the angels of the Lord compelling them to come in. I see the highways and the byways. It's a compelling, there's a commanding, there's a pulling from the Spirit for people to come in. This is going to be a time of the electricity. This house is going to be electric. It's going to be alive like never before. People are going to come, I mean, they're, they're going to come in, they're going to be awakened, they're going to be brought to life. It's going to be electric in this place. You're going to have trouble shutting down the meetings because people are going to want to just stay in the presence. I see people getting healed in the parking lot. And it's not because, you know, some rebellious saint was out there praying. It was just because the presence of God, when they walked on the property, 
because people have been praying. They would just get healed right in the parking lot. You're going to see miracles of provision and finance specifically going to begin to happen. People that have been that have been you know so they've been they've been sowing. You're going to begin to hear testimonies where 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 debts were canceled. You're going to begin to hear testimonies where finances were brought in, job promotions. I, I, there's going to be things that are going to begin to break, going to be bro- breaking out in this house. I see the waves of the Holy Spirit crashing upon the shores of this lighthouse. I see it building. I see it building. I see it building and I see a building. And I see it crashing. The Spirit of God crashing in. I see three waves crashing in. Even in this next year, just just the crash of the Holy Spirit in this place. And every wave will be bigger than the last. Lord, I bless this place. I thank you that this is a house of revival. There are the waves of the Spirit. (sighs) Glory. I see boats coming. I see ministries coming. I see interesting people coming as well. Don't think it's strange if you have some surfer types coming in, some hippies, interesting people. On their surfboards. <laughs> Lord, we bless this house. We thank you for a global harvest church. Lord, we thank you for the harvest, ripe, the expansion, the radius of this place. Lord, we thank you that this calling people in. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. right now wow hallelujah yes God God we say yes Father we thank you that you're so faithful God your your faithfulness knows no limits God we love you we worship you today we worship you today thank you God We honor you. We love you. We thank you not only for those words, but God, we thank you for the the grace, the anointing. God, your great faithfulness that sustained us and your great faithfulness and your promises, everything that you've promised, everything that you've said. God, we just thank you, God. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. Man, I just feel like I'm in eternity. I don't know any other way to say that. Wow. Thank you, Lord. We need to take an offering. So I think Charlie and what he's doing is good ground. Amen. And we're just so thankful. And I know many have already given and sowed. And just ask the Father what he would have you to do today. How he would want you to give. We just want to take a moment again to give and to sow. So, wow. There they are. All right. 
Uh, make, <laughs> make checks payable to Global Harvest Church. We'll write him one check. And so if you want to give cash, wow, I am just not here. If you want to give cash, raise your hand. Someone surely will give you an envelope. She's doing it now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just bless this offering. We just sow in faith. Things that you've given, we sow to Charlie today. God, we just thank you for what you've done. Over these last days, these last moments, God, thank you how you're crashing in. God, you're just crashing in today. You've been crashing in. And Lord, you're going to just continue to do that. And Lord, we, you don't need our permission. But God, we just say yes. We just ask for more, God. There's always more. And we just ask for more. And we thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. You guys just take that. Go ahead and take that and praise God. Mm. He's so good. He's so good. Man, I can't wait to be at Supernatural School this year. <laughs> wow. And those of you that have always already graduated, right, you do know that you can come back and audit for free if you've completed the program. So, uh, wow, some of you maybe need to audit a lot. Hallelujah. Wow. Well, Father, we thank you. We thank you for these moments, this time together. And Lord, may it just continue to grow. May you just continue to do everything that you've promised and we just yield our lives to you because, man, it's not hard to, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And Lord, we just thank you that you love us so much. And we're just filled with love and gratitude today. Thank you for what you've shifted even in the city and in the region in these last moments, what you've done today. And Father, we glorify you, we honor you and we thank you. Father, all those that are traveling today and traveling back, Lord, we just ask for, for mercy, protection, safety, and just thank you. Thank you, Lord, for those that have come in for this weekend. We just bless them. We bless their ministries. We bless their homes. Father, thank you for what you're going to do as a result of this, this time together. And we glorify you and magnify you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Well, praise God. It's been good, you guys. Uh, if you do need further prayer, um, I think do we have ministry teams. If you need more prayer, prophetic ministry here, I know maybe we should just tell you to go hear God. <laughs> if you need prayer, further prayer for healing, we'll have a healing team here. So if I can have those teams come. Bless you guys. Have a great, great week. Have a great day, and we will see you. Amen. Bless you. Just thank Charlie. Let's just thank him for this time of ministry, and uh, we're just thankful to the Father. Amen. Bless you guys. Have a great day.